Friends, the best tax planning advice you've never heard of. That's what we're going to talk about here today. Man, I cannot wait to talk about this. I've been wanting to talk about this for a long, long time. So if your tax planning and financial planning, everything under the sun planning is under your is on your mind, you've come to the right place at the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe down below. It's on one of those sides. I think of that side, something like that. And then hit the bell to be notified for future content because, man... <laughs> This this episode is going to rock your world. No other way around that. So let's dive right into it. I'm using a different screen sharing thing today. We'll see if this one works because the other one was giving me a hard time. So hopefully this will work. This actually allows me to do a couple of things in, ter in terms of uh, going like this. You can do like that, which is pretty cool because I want to uh, uh, draw your attention to a couple of points. All right, let's get right into it. All right, and the only drawback, I kind of like the circle as opposed to the triangle or the square, but whatever. All right, so we're going to talk about this right here, my friends. And we're going to, let's I tell you what, let's mess with this here a little bit. We'll go like, oops, what do I got to do? I got to go that and that. There we go. I wonder if I can highlight it. Bear with me just a second. Nope, that doesn't work. Okay. All right, so under IRC, Internal Revenue Code, Section uh, 1014, the income tax basis of property acquired from a decedent is based on its value, value for federal tax estate purposes. As a result, the basis of the property held by the decedent is adjusted, stepped up, or down to its fair market value as of the date of the decedent's death as, or as the alternative valuation date pursuant to an election under IRC Section 2032. The, huh? All right, don't, don't hang up. Don't go away. This is critical, man. You've got to stay with me here. All right, for property held jointly, Let's see where I'm looking at. For property held jointly by husband and wife, Section 2040B provides that one half of the value of the property is included in the estate. And that's simple. You got a husband and wife. I die. My wife's own asset is not included in the estate. Only mine is because I own half it. Consequently, one half of the value of the property would be adjusted to its fair market value upon passing to the surviving spouse. Again, a step up basis. I die. My half is included in the estate. My wife inherits that half 100% step up on that half of the property. Now, I will get deeper into what step up means, but just remember that. In contrast, <laughs> it's just freaking awesome. If property is classified as community property, not only does the decedent's share of the property receive a new basis, but also the surviving spouse's share receives the same basis if at least one half of the community property is includable in the decedent's gross estate. Additionally, if the decedent lives a her, his or her portion of the community property interest to the surviving spouse, there would be no increase in taxable estate. <sighs> I love the tax code. I'm just going to do like this, like this, because I just love this new thing I got here. All right. And I'll put a link to the show notes. I just want to point that out because I want you all to understand what this means. This is huge. I'm going to read it again. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. In contrast, if property is classified as community property, not only does the decedent share of the property receive a new basis, so the decedent, I die, my wife is Charlotte, Josh dies. My share of the property, my $250,000, which is my share, steps up to the $500,000 fair market value. Okay. So that means that 250,000 that I've, I got 250,000 to my cost basis and I died was worth 500,000. That $250,000 gain is wiped off the map for step up basis. Um, but also the surviving spouse's share receives the same basis. If at least half of the community property is includable in the decedent's gross estate. And because I own half of it, it is included in my decedent's gross estate. But <laughs> If the decedent leaves a her, his or her portion to, a portion to the community property uh, interest to the surviving spouse, there will be no increase in the taxable estate because there's an unlimited exemption. If a husband dies and leaves it to wife, wife dies and leaves it to husband. This goes back to the whole thing with same-sex couples, by the way. Regardless of what you feel about that, it's not fair if you're, you're a, a couple is married they can't leave assets to transfer back and forth via the planning. It's just, I mean, literally, it doesn't matter. I just, I find that to be a huge benefit of the tax code of unlimited exemptions upon your death to your surviving spouse, regardless of the sex of your spouse. It's just a, it's, it's just what it is. So anyway, I find that very interesting. Um, not anything to do with the politics of it, but at the end of the day, I can, can you see how someone would be, wait a second, I, I got to pay a hundred percent of state tax on this. 
but yet that guy over there can leave everything to a surviving spouse and not pay anything. It doesn't seem fair. So, I mean, that's been, I don't like how they got remedied, but there it is. But anyway, all this is saying, my friends, is at the end of the day, <laughs> if you live in a community property state and you have an account, you I, initially in a video, I said, I thought it had to be in a trust. No, it does not. It just has to be in a community property state. So Charlotte and Josh have an account. We, we put $500,000 in there. $250,000 is attributed to me. $250,000 is attributed to Charlotte. The account grows to a million dollars. I die. Charlotte, in a community property state, inherits that million dollars. Obviously, no taxes or no estate tax because it transfers from spouse to spouse without any estate tax at the death of the first spouse. But not only that, she also receives a step up in basis to a million dollars. All right. So she gets the complete entire value of the date of death, date, date of death value of that portfolio <laughs> to the entirety is stepped up. So if she were to sell that million dollar proceeds that she just received from my death for a million hundred thousand dollars, she'd only have to pay capital gain tax on that hundred thousand dollars. Her part of the of the tax cost basis is also stepped up as well as mine in the community property estates states so let's just we'll, we'll dive in a couple examples here because this is a one a cpa journal this is a wonderful article here uh, from a year ago community property is defined as property that is procured during marriage in a community property state there are two possible procedures to transform separate property uh transform separate property which includes property acquired before the marriage or by gift bequethal, dissent, or devise into a community property for taxpayers who domicile in the community property state. The first approach is to uh, can combine separate uh, separate property with community property. The second approach is to gift one half of the separate property of a spouse to the other spouse. Although couples living in common law states cannot change non-community property to community property. All right. So if you live in Georgia and you have non-community property state property, you cannot change it to community property. Couples who relocate from community property states to common law states can maintain the community property standing of the property they bring with them. While conversion to community property status may bring a complete step up in basis, non-tax factors should also be considered. All right. On the death of the first spouse, community property may be written up to its full or fair market value or full fair market value. Excuse me. Uh, the author describes community property, how to obtain community property status, and how to maintain such status when moving to a non-community property state. Currently, there are eight community property states, Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, New Mexico, Nevada, Texas, and Washington. In 1984, Wisconsin enacted the Marital Property Reform Act, which incorporates many community property principles and has been recognized by the IRS as a community property state, so Wisconsin as well. Over one fourth of the population resides in community property states, several of which are among the fastest growing in the nation, California, uh, Texas, Idaho. Uh, in our mobile society, this means there are millions of relocations, both to and from community property states. This mobility states between states requires that even tax player, planner, that planners in common law states be aware of the tax implications of owning community property. All right, so just, I wanna, was it this one to give an example? Uh, well, I think they did. They give us an example here, but uh, let's see. I thought they give us. Yeah, right here. Okay. Example. The following example illustrates the potential advantage that appreciated asset classified in a community property would have would have over an asset held in a joint tenancy in a non-community property state. All right. Um, a, a common law. Husband and wife own a house with a basis of 20000 that is considered to be community property. Husband dies, leaving his community interest in, in, the spouse, in the house to his spouse. The house is valued at $150,000 for estate tax purposes. The basis in the house is stepped up from $20,000 to $150,000, and one half of the value of the house will be included in the husband's estate. A marital deduction is allowed for the portion of the house included in the husband's estate since the husband's community interest is in the house passes to his wife. The result is no increase in the husband's and taxable estate because it's completely given to a spouse because it's a, a, a unlimited marital deduction from one spouse to the other. There's no estate tax due whatsoever. Assume the same facts as an example one, except the house is held in joint tenancy instead of community property. The wife's basis would be 85,000 computed as follows. 
$10,000, which is her half of the initial cost. So they pay $20,000, bucks, 10000 to the husband, 10000 to the wife. All right. Uh, and plus 75,000 because it appreciated to 150,000. All right. So we got 75,000 of the appreciation uh, plus the initial uh, $10,000 they, they, they had or 75,000 of the total value at the husband's death. So she has 10,000 cost basis. Her half of that was 75,000. We add the 10,000 plus the 75,000 of her half and we give her a cost basis of $85,000. That's her cost basis. Now, she still gets the property without any estate tax because, again, community property, joint tenants, common law property doesn't matter. At the end of the day, she still inherits any property or he inherits from a, sp a spouse without any estate tax. But the difference is her basis is now 85, the 10,000 she started with, plus half of the value at the date of death of the husband. Her basis is $85,000. Since the surviving spouse will receive full ownership of the house, including one half the value of the house, uh, the estate would be neutralized, neutralized by offsetting marital deduction. If the property is separately owned um, or solely owned of the first spouse to die, there would be a full income tax basis adjusted upon the death of the first spouse. The result is that the same as if the property were community property. So I want to real I want to go back to talk all about what's going on here. So if you live in a community property state. You have a $20,000 cost basis on a property, on a house that increases to $150,000. Josh dies. Wife gets $150,000 without any estate tax and without any, the whole thing steps up. So her $150,000 is now her cost basis. That means if she sold that property tomorrow for $150,000, she owes zero in taxes. Zero. All right. That's comp community property. No estate tax complete transfer or a step up in basis on the entire value of the property. If it's a common law property in Georgia, she still has a $10,000 cost basis plus the half of the, the fair market value at the date of death of me. So now her cost basis is 85,000. If she sells that property, uh, I don't know what I did in my calculator, but 150,000, there it is, 150,000 minus 85,000, her capital gain will be $65,000. Now you can add, well, it's a house, so there's some other limitations on capital gains. That's true. Let's just say that's a stock, though. She'd have to pay capital gain tax on $65,000. No capital gain tax on community property, capital gain tax on $65,000 in a common law property. Common law is a bulk of the United States. On top of that, now remember, there's no estate tax on either side. Now what they're saying, secondly, is that if I had my account in my name solely and Charlotte had her account, her name solely, my account will transfer all of it to her completely free of estate and or uh, or won't be any capital gain tax either because she will step up her amount to the property that was in my name. But if it's jointly owned, she's only going to get a step up in the value that's attributed to me, which is half the property. I know it's confusing, but it's a critical, critical, critical for you guys got to kind of start understanding this because it's a huge benefit of the tax code, which I guarantee you've never heard of. Example three, wife predeceases her husband. At the time of the death, she owns 100 shares of Prime Maria Corp. Her basis in the share at the time of death was 10,000 bucks. And the shares were valued for estate purposes at, at 50,000 when she died. So her basis is 10, it grew to 50, has a $40,000 net unrealized appreciation. The shares would receive a step up in basis to 50,000. Because again, it's only in her name. Just like if anything that you own only, not jointly, just if it's in your name only and you die, it will receive a step up in basis to a person who you who you will bequest, bequest that to. If the property were community property, the shares would receive the same step up basis to 50000 So if you have a community property estate, uh, if you have a community property, a property asset, and $10,000 is the cost basis. It grew to $50,000. Charlotte dies because it's community property. The entire $50,000 transfers to me tax-free. I turn around, sell that stock for $50,000, completely free of any capital gain taxes whatsoever. And it won't be subject to a state tax either, simply because it's unlimited marital deduction, marital deduction. Example four, assume the same facts as example three, except the shares are the separate property of the husband. Since the wife dies before the husband, there would be no step up in basis. In contrast, if the shares were community property, they receive the full 50,000. We're going to talk about that. Thus, while a full basis adjustment is allowed for community property, even though only half of the property's value is included in the decedent's gross estate, 
only the decedent's share of jointly held property is subject to basis adjustment, step up basis. There would be no basis adjustment when the property is a separate property of surviving spouse. So I own the shares outright. My wife does not. And even my wife dies, I don't get any step up in basis whatsoever because she had no ownership stake in the property. It just doesn't work like that. A community property, whole different story, whole different story. All right. So uh, we, we community. I want to kind of talk about uh, retaining community property status and relocating. For a couple residing in a community property state, there's an opportunity to convert non-community property to community property. In contrast, taxpayers domiciled in common law states, the vast majority, cannot convert non-community property to community property. A couple that moves to a common law state from a community property state, we move from Texas to Georgia, uh, Texas to New Jersey, and now we're in Georgia, does have the opportunity to retain community property status for any such transported, transported property. It is important to maintain good records and to pay careful attention to how the property is retitled or titled to retain the status. Generally, in common law states, how property is titled determines ownership. For example, property held in the name of the husband is considered to be separate property of the husband. Property held in joint tenancy form is considered to be jointly held property. Therefore, to preserve community status, the property should be titled as community property. Okay, so we're saying neither. You shouldn't have joint property and you shouldn't have separate property. It should just be titled as community property in community property states. Therefore, to preserve community status, the property should be titled. We are talking about. <coughs> Moreover, if a community property or proceeds from the sale of the community property are used to acquire other property, it is essential to maintain complete records to trace back, to trace the purchase of community property. Rule Revenue Rule 68-80 presents a scenario in which a couple moves from a community property state, Texas, to a uh, to a common law state, New Jersey, and trades community property owned in the community property state for real property in the common law state. So I'm selling my house in Texas and buying one in New Jersey. They take the title to the property in the common law state as tenants in common. The ruling states that under these circumstances, no step-up basis would be allowed on the surviving spouse's one-half interest in the property, even though community funds were used to purchase. So in this case, Charles and I moved to Texas. So I moved to New Jersey from Texas. Common law property is in New Jersey. Community property is Texas. We sell our house in Texas. We turn around and use the proceeds to buy a house in New Jersey, but we title it tenants in common. At my death, she will not get a step up in her part of the what was the heretofore a community property state because we titled it as tenants in common, which is common law. Common law states vary in the recognition of pro community property status. When relocating to some common law states, it may be necessary to adopt strategies other than simply titling assets as community property. One alternative is to leave the community property in the community property state. Another might be to establish a spousal partnership to hold the community assets, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, so there's a lot going on here. The couple might also consider transferring the community property into a revocable inter vivos trust. Inter vivos trust is a living trust. That's all that means. Uh, to preserve the community property status, that would be something beyond my expertise. You'd need to seek legal guidance there for sure. Uh, Revenue Rule 66-283 indicates that community property transferred to such a trust will be uh, treated for income tax purposes as community property. So going back to when is it okay to have a living trust? Right there. You're going from a community property state to a common law state. You want to maintain your community property status. That property needs to be put in a trust. There's no other way around that. That's the way to do it right there. All right. Uh, I'm not going to get into all this. Sorry, I just I didn't want to go to this other uh, thing right here. Do I get a step up in securities on my death of a spouse? And here we got another CPA, and this is from uh, uh, calcpa.org. I live in California. I know it's pretty small. Um, let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Zoom in. There we go. Let's make that a little bit bigger, shall we? All right, there we go. All right. I live in California, community property state. I have a brokerage account. The fact that he says uh, community property state. I have a brokerage account that holds various securities that required during the year of our marriage, but my wife has never listed on the accounts. She died recently. So do I still get a step up on the basis of the accounts? Federal tax uh, code section 101.4 B6. Remind, remember that provides that community property assets step up 100% basis at the death of one spouse, even though the other one survives. Example, stock worth 100 at the date of death with a basis of 20 steps up to 100 basis upon date of death. This is distinguished from common law states, non-community property states, where step up occurs to the extent of the decedent's ownership in it, i.e. one half of the property. Uh, where were we here? 
Uh, step up because I, uh, basis on one half of the property held a joint tenancy or tenancy by the entirety steps up on death on one house. Okay. Just got to be careful how you title it. Joint tenants with rights of survivorship or could violate the community property status. You want to be titled as community property. Uh, exam stock worth 100 at the date of death with basis of 20 has a new basis of 60. Uh, for common law, joint tenants with rights of survivorship, uh, tenants, uh, tenants by the entirety, tenants in common, all that stuff. Uh, which is fifty dollars of the decedent share plus one half of the original um, cost basis. So the answer to your question is likely yes. You get one hundred percent step up basis as your facts indicate that the securities are community property, even though they were never t listed on the accounts. All right. So, and here they got a typo. Yours is a challenge of proof. Oh, challenge of proof. Okay, that's not a typo. My fault. All right. So my friends, the whole point about this: if you live in a community property state, and let's go back over to what these are. Now, this is why you pay me the big bucks, right, for these free YouTube channels. The only thing I ask is watch some of the commercials. It does uh, help YouTube pay me a little bit for sure. Um, you know, I'm never going to get rich off it, but if I can get enough to pay the bills, I'm a good place. I can keep doing this. All right, so the eight community property states plus Wisconsin, Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, New Mexico, Nevada, Texas, and Washington. All in the West, except for, yeah, all in the West, except for Wisconsin. And I guess some would say Texas, too. So you got to understand that you got to understand what community property is because huge tax consequences. So remember the example I was doing ETS versus mutual funds. And I had uh, Joe and uh, Bob and Jane YouTube each had $250,000. When Bob died, Jane would, and now this is a little bit different because they're individually owned. So it's not quite the same because there's no way to title as community property in the software. But if they had it as titled as community property, Jane would inherit the proceeds 100% free and clear of any estate tax or any capital gain tax as well. Not free of income tax from dividends and capital gains, but or interest, but she would receive it free from any capital gain. So if she decided to sell that property, in fact, I might do another one where I show you the difference of what she inherits that. That'll be a good one. I'll do that next where you say she inherits the property with no absolutely step with a hundred percent step up basis. And you'll see the difference of taxes. I am going to do that. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. All right. Hope this helps. Community property, the taxes on community property. If you're living out West or you're living out West and transferring to a common law state, or if you're living in a common law state and transferring to Texas or Arizona uh, or something like that, or Idaho, understand how community property works. It can save you huge amounts of taxes, my friends, huge. As always, if you like what you see here, if we're doing stuff that's unique that you've never heard before and you're like, eh, that's pretty cool, but I'm not quite sure, always get research it. I got no problem with that whatsoever. Find out who a good CPA is, a good attorney. Uh, they can help you with this stuff for sure. Is it worth hiring an advisor? Well, I'll just ask you this. I mean, just what are you learning here? All right. That's just all you have to answer yourself. If you're learning something here and you didn't know that on your own, um, the answer is probably yes. The drawback, of course, is how many advisors know this. And I frankly don't think that many. So that's the concern I have is hiring an advisor is all encompassing, including crappy advisors and good ones. The good ones that just aren't that many. And that's too bad. Uh, and I wish I had an answer. What would define a good one versus bad? I just don't. But I did a video on what to look for, at least when you're choosing an advisor. Taxes are a big deal. Taxes are so much more important than stupid investment returns in terms of, well, my market did 5%. Mine did 5.25. I could care less. What's the tax burden you're going to pay? What if I retitle community property assets to joint tenants of rights of survivorship? What did I just do from a tax perspective? You just killed yourself. More, 10 times more than 25 basis points different on investment returns. Ah! So don't forget to subscribe. Comments, 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 comments help immensely, of course. And then I go to the blog at heritagewealthplanning.com. Brand new website out there. Love it. Heritagewealthplanning.com. And no, go like me on Facebook too. Facebook, Heritage Wealth Planning. Uh, I think you just go to Facebook, Heritage Wealth Planning. See you next time. Thanks, guys.